dear friends. Jesus has begun his public ministry, whilst John the Baptist has been imprisoned for public denunciations of Herod. One is increasing, whilst the other is decreasing. And from prison, John sends his disciples to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we wait for another? And Jesus then refers to the Isaiahic prophecy of the Messiah, which is being fulfilled around him. And then Jesus says something which may seem a little curious. Blessed is he who takes no offence at me. What does this mean? What is Jesus referring to when he talks about taking offence? Now, there is a very important group of concepts in the New Testament which hang together and need to be understood together, involving who Satan is and how he works. And the key words to tune into are to do with giving offence and stumbling, as in the stumbling block, that which is an occasion for leading someone else to sin. In Greek, the word is scandalon, hence what we are talking about is scandal, being scandalised. What Jesus says is, blessed is the one who isn't scandalised by me. Essentially, Satan is the prince of this world. Now this doesn't mean that Satan created this physical world, over against God who created a spiritual world, that's Gnosticism, and absolutely opposed to the Christian faith. No, Satan is the prince of this world in the sense of being in charge of worldly things, worldly perspectives. Satan is literally the accuser, and the way in which a false group cohesion is fostered is through the exclusion of scapegoats, the ones who carry the sin of the wider group. In particular, Satan is in charge of the herd, or group mentality, which seeks a scapegoat on which to lay the problems of a group. And think of the role of the Jews in 1930s Germany, probably the best example of the satanic perspective being given a free reign. Finally, the stumbling block is precisely the scandal, i.e. that which is offensive to this worldly mentality, this groupthink. The point of Christian faith is that, through identification with Christ on the cross, the scapegoat crucified by the world, we are set free from these worldly patterns of thought. Therefore, one hallmark of a Christian is not taking offence, for the taking of offence is a worldly judgment. It is, in Christian terms, a sin. It's a breach in our relationship with God and with neighbour. As a redeemed sinner, there is no place to stand over against a neighbour, thus there can be no exclusion that exclusion which ultimately leads to murder. What we have instead is the sharing of peace leading to communion. Now this is something which Jesus understood. In our reading from Isaiah today, we are presented with a vision of tremendous joy. The lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy, and they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. This is a cheerful message, a vision that inspired the early Christian community and energised their activity. There was something here that could be hoped for and worked towards, and they took its message to heart. Be strong, fear not, your God will come and save you. What this did, what all the prophets did, from Moses with Pharaoh, through Isaiah and Jeremiah, all the way through to Jesus, saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, what this does is to say, it doesn't have to be like this. It allows us to dream that things can be different. It allows us to hope that things will improve. It develops the imagination, the prophetic imagination, that is the real force for changing the world, the vehicle for the spirit, the means for bringing the kingdom into being. If you don't believe me, just consider how Nelson Mandela was shaped in his decades in prison. It's only possible to forgive when you are not scandalised by the one who has harmed you, when you recognise that we are all sinners all on the same level. Again, this is what is symbolised by the sharing of peace, leading to communion. Listen to our reading this morning from James. You also must be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is near. Beloved, do not grumble against one another, so that you may not be judged. See, the judge is standing at the doors. As an example of suffering and patience, beloved, Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. We are called to work quietly, thoroughly, with patience and perseverance for the overcoming of the world. And we mustn't grumble. We mustn't complain. We must not take offence. For we have received a promise in Jesus. We have received a hope 
we have received the capacity for joy. This hope, this longing, is what Advent is about. For we look forward with eager longing to the coming of our Lord, when all shall be changed, when the lion shall dwell with the lamb, and when all the things that trouble us or threaten us fall away. For Jesus has transformed the situation. He acted out the prophecy of Isaiah, and so could give this message. Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is he who takes no offence at me. For those who do not believe, Jesus is offensive. To the powers that be, to the culture despisers, to the ones who mutter in cynical despair. But he is coming again, and sooner than we think. Let us, in the meantime, love one another, not grumble, not take offence, and fill our hearts with the joy that is coming into the world. Amen.